And the next ones, epsilon 2, epsilon 3, and so on, I assume that they are given by uh, ID uh, independent uh, Bernoulli variables uh, with parameter P. And you construct uh, step by step your uh, repentant random walk according to the following rule. So I, I will denote uh, by X uh, chech N, the N steps. And the rule is that if the bit at the N step is a zero, then you counterbalance. If the step, uh, if the, the bit is a one, then you innovate. Okay, so to be more specific, the nth step is if you, the, if you have regrets, you counterbalance as meaning that you have uh, epsilon n is equal to zero, then you pick one of your previous steps, which you have done so far, and you replace, well, you, you, your new step is a negative of that, of that one, of the one you have just picked. And otherwise, if uh, you innovate, then you make a new independent uh, step with a distribution mu. Okay. So here, more precisely, uh, the variable un, which you use to counterbalance your step, un is picked uniformly at random among the, uh, the, the integers 1 to n minus 1. And the in here is simply the number of uh, innovations that you have uh, made. So, uh, in short, you have three independent sources of randomness. Uh, the random bits, epsilon, the independent steps, x1, x2, and so on, and the uniform uh, variables, uh, which you decide to, at, at which you look back uh, at your past. So I stress that you can counterbalance several times the same step, you can also counterbalance a step which you have already counterbalanced previously. Uh, so there is a kind of a, a change of a chain of counterbalancing. So let, let me briefly describe uh, an example uh, just to be sure that everyone has understood the, the dynamics. So we consider this sequence of, uh, of bits. So as I say, you start uh, within an innovation with a one. The zero next uh, means that you are counterbalancing some step as a second step. The next one means that you innovate again, then you will counterbalance twice, three times, then innovate again, then counterbalance and so on. So you, you need also to specify which steps are counterbalanced. So they, they are only defined for the values uh, of uh, uh, n's such that epsilon n is equal to zero. So the, for, the, the, for the one here, I, I do not need to uh, give any, any value. So assume first the first counterbalancing event, uh, you decide to counterbalance the first step. Then for the fourth one, you decide to counterbalance the second step. The third here, uh, you will counterbalance the fourth step and so on. Again, you counterbalance the fourth step and here you will counterbalance the third step, okay? So this means that in terms of your steps, uh, your sequence uh, uh, exchange, so you start always with an innovation. Then the next, uh, you know that this is, uh, you regret what you have done. So you counterbalance, uh, you have no choice, you can only counterbalance the first step, so you get a minus one. Then you have, a one meaning that you innovate again. So the next step is x2. Mm -hmm. Then uh, you have a zero for epsilon meaning, and you see that uh, u4 uh, is equal to two. So you need to counterbalance the second step, which is minus x1. So the first step is then uh, x1. Okay. Uh, then uh, you have again, uh, you again regret what you have done, but this time you decide to counterbalance the fourth steps. So the fourth step is this one, x1. So you have a minus x1 afterwards. Okay. 
the same thing happens next. So you again counterbalance the four steps, which is minus one. Then you have an innovation. It's uh, the one there. So the innovations gives you x3 because you have used so far x1, x2. So thereafter, you counterbalance again. And this time you counterbalance your third step. So which is x2, meaning that you get a minus x2 and so on. Okay, so I hope that the uh, dynamics of the repentant uh, walker is, uh, is clear. And uh, what is uh, the position of the walker after n steps? Well, it's given by the sum of these uh, uh, steps x change, uh from one to n, as we have just introduced. And so the, the purpose uh, is to analyze, to understand the asymptotic behavior as n tends to infinity of uh, s church n. And uh, in this direction, the, the first two moments of uh, the distribution, the step distribution mu will be relevant. So I denote by m1 the first moment, m2 the second moment. Okay, and we shall always assume that these two quantities are well defined. Okay, so uh, the first topic of interest is uh, the, we will discuss the ballistic behavior, that is uh, the law of large numbers. And it's very easy to check from the dynamics of repentance that there is uh, an equation for the expectation of the uh, n plus one step of your uh, repentant random walk. So this is the equation here. And this only depends on the, the position of the walker at stage M. Uh, so essentially this means that you, you are able to, uh, you have a, a recursive equation for the first moment of uh, the walker and you can solve this equation explicitly. And it's not difficult to see that uh, on average, uh, the walker after N step will be at distance uh, p divided by two minus p times m1, m1 being the, the expectation of the typical step. Okay. And uh, it's certainly not as a surprise that actually this uh, result, which is just a result in, uh, in expectation, uh, has also a, a probabilistic, uh, I mean, it's also a, a limit in probability. So you have a kind of a law of large number or ballistic behavior. Uh, so the, the position of the walker after n steps is uh, given by the, the mean uh, m1. And you multiply it by a, a factor. So uh, the factor is p divided by 2 minus p. Uh, and then you multiply by, uh, by n. So the, the, on average, you, you are at, at this distance from, uh, from the origin. Um, so, so what you see on, the, on this uh, ballistic behavior is that repentance does affect the, uh, the, the ballistic behavior of the walker and the, the P is a parameter of innovation. So the larger P is, uh, the larger this uh, factor is. And so this means that Looks like Jean frozen. I hear nothing. Yeah, I can't hear anything. Yeah, it looks like, looks like. Uh, something happened to the internet connection. Okay, let's wait. Was there, I think? Uh, yes. And okay, and the, my, my main concern, uh, my main interest will be about the uh, central limit theorem, let's say, or the asymptotic normality for, uh, for the walker. Uh, so now here is a, the main uh, theorem. You assume that the second moment exists and there is a convergence in this in the distribution of uh, the random uh, repentant random walk 
you subtract the uh, the mean. Uh, this is uh, the, this subtraction is due to the uh, ballistic behavior that we just discussed, and you normalize it as in the uh, usual central limit theorem by uh, Rutten. And this converges in distribution, and the limit is a, a Gaussian, but a centered Gaussian variable, uh, but with uh, a variance which is perhaps uh, a bit surprising. Uh, so it's given on the, on the theorem. I will not read it. Um, I think it's interesting to observe that uh, the variance of the limit depends linearly on the second moment and on the square of the first moment. Uh, but it does not depend only on the variance of your step, and which is uh, uh, a bit surprising. So, this is, in a sense, the, the main result, which I, I would like to, to discuss in the, in the rest of the talk. Um, but it's, it's, a, it's a bit like uh, in a trip. I mean, wh when you are making a, a trip, you, you need a goal. So the, the goal is this theorem. But if, you're, uh, <laughs> if your trip is interesting, actually, uh, the, 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 the places you visit during your trip are uh, may be more interesting than the, the goal itself. So by this, I mean that possibly there are more direct ways of establishing this result. Uh, but my interest will be uh, essentially the, some connections with uh, combinatorics, which might be uh, more interesting on, on our ways. And in particular, the, the proofs, uh, I will not give full proof, but just uh, rough indications. Uh, we will identify the, the main actors who are responsive for the asymptotic uh, behavior that uh, have been described in these uh, two theorems. And more precisely, uh, we'll see that the ballistic behavior is entirely due uh, to a, a small group of random variables. Uh, these are the ones which have appeared just once. So the, you have made a step, but you haven't yet counterbalanced this step. And this is, uh, the, essentially the explanation of uh, the ballistic behavior. So roughly speaking, the, the, the number of steps that you have done and not uh, counterbalance is the explanation of this uh, factor P divided mm -hmm. by two minus P in the uh, uh, law of large numbers. And the asymptotic normality is uh, significantly more complex. It has uh, various sources. Uh, First source is uh, the fluctuation of the preceding number. So as I say, the, the number of variables which have appeared exactly once is of order p divided by 2 minus p times n. Uh, but there are fluctuations. And these fluctuations will play a role in the uh, normal uh, uh, central limit theorem. There is also <coughs> a central limit theorem, which is related to the variables which have used twice three times, four times, and so on. And last but not least, uh, there, there will be uh, some uh, further central limit theorem related to, to Ernst. So in short, the, the proof relies on a bit, mostly on combinatorial analysis uh, and connection with uh, permutations, recursive trees, Ernst, and uh, Eulerian numbers, which I will uh, now describe. Well. To, to start our journey, we will start with, uh, let's say, uh, the, the easiest walk. So uh, let's, let's just consider the, the simplest of this model. Uh, it's called the simple random walk full of regrets, meaning that uh, the walker is, uh, yes, he, he keeps regretting what he has done. So there is no innovation. Uh, he makes a first step, and for simplicity, you, you decide that the, the first step is a step of a unit length. And all the time, all the rest of the time, the walker will regret some of its action. So the only source of randomness are the steps which are regretted successively by the walker. And these are these variables u2, u3, and so on, un. And remember that they are independent and they are given by uh, so un is has a uniform distribution on the uh, uh, integers one to n minus one 
So this is the step that you regret, the step that you will counterbalance. Okay. So in, in, this, uh, in this framework, it is uh, convenient to represent these uh, uniform random variables as a so-called uh, random recursive tree. So what is a random recursive tree? It's probably one of the simplest uh, kind of random tree you can imagine. You use the, non -negative, the positive integers uh, as uh, vertices, and you decide to create an edge between n and its parent, and the parent is chosen uniformly at random among the preceding vertices. Okay, so let's, let's see uh, how it works. So you start, uh, you have no choice. Uh, this is the ancestor of your tree. Uh, then comes the second vertex, and the, the second vertex has also no choice. It has to, to choose one as parent. Let's say that the third vertex, now it has two choices, and it chooses uh, the second vertex as parent. Then the fourth vertex chooses the first one, fifth one, sixth, seventh one, and so on. Okay, so that's the way you are growing your uh, random recursive tree. And in our setting, uh, this describes uh, the, uh, the behavior of the worker full of regret in the sense that uh, you know that at the, say for instance the fourth step of the walk you will regret th the first one at the six steps of your walk you will regret the second one which in turn was a, a remorse of the first one okay so the first one by our convention is just a, a step plus one meaning that uh, we just have to care about the signs of the, the steps and they are given by the, uh, so they are given as follows. You, as the first uh, generation, I mean, the ancestor has a, a plus. Uh, individuals at the second generation correspond to minus. Individuals at the second generation with plus, third generation with a minus and so on. Okay, so this is the ancestor, first generation, second generation, third generation and so on. Okay. So what does that mean for the worker? This means that uh, the quantity that you are interested in is the difference between the number of individuals which are at even generation minus the number of individuals which are at odd generations. Okay, and here generations are measured uh, with respect to the ancestor, to the vertex one. So that, this is the quantity which tells you where the walker will be after n steps. And it turns out that uh, random recursive trees are closely connected with uh, uniform random permutations. And uh, more specifically, uh, a random recursive tree of size n plus one uh, can be viewed as a modelization of a random uniform permutation of size. And in this framework, uh, the number of odd vertices, vertices at odd generation, minus one, has the same law as the number of descents in a uniform random permutation of size n. So what, what, what do I mean by uh, descent? So you look at the uh, number of times you say you, you have a permutation sigma and the number of times k such that sigma of k is larger than sigma of k plus one. So that's the number of descents. And these two random variables, number of odd vertices minus one and the number of descents have the same distribution. And the number of descents in, uh, in, rand in uh, permutations are well understood. And in particular, the, the distribution is given by the so-called uh, Eulerian numbers, which are the, the numbers given at the, the bottom of this, uh, of this slide. Uh, for us, this formula will not be uh, that important. But nonetheless, uh, what will be relevant for us is that there are symmetries uh, in permutation. In particular, it's uh, easy to see that as soon as uh, you have a permutation of size uh, three and larger, uh, the, on average, the number of descents uh, is the same as the number of uh, ascent. 
Okay. And this means that uh, the random variable you are interested in here, the, the difference between uh, even and odd vertices is actually uh, a symmetric random variable when n is at least three. Uh, this is not the case for n equals one because you have for n equals one, you have a single variable, a single, sorry, a single vertex. And so you have just one even vertex and no odd vertex. For n equals two, that's uh, trivial because you must have uh, one even vertex and one odd vertex. And from three and onwards, uh, the distribution, the random variables that you observe has a symmetric distribution. So this is one, uh, one aspect. Uh, another interesting uh, identity, which uh, is well known in this setting, in the setting of Eulerian numbers, is the so-called lagrange tenney uh, identity, which allows you to uh, identify in distribution the quantity uh, number of odd vertices minus one as the integer part of a sum u1, u2, u and so on. And these one are ID uniform random variables on zero. So the, this, this uh, identity is extremely uh, useful because, okay, uh, integer part are uh, basically just a, a very minor nuisance, but then you are able to estimate uh, moments using such a representation. And this is, uh, something which would have been uh, harder if you used only the expression, the explicit expression of Eulerian numbers. Okay, so just as a, as a very simple application of uh, what I uh, just explained, uh, <coughs> you see that for the, uh, using this lagrange tenney uh, identity, there is a, a central limit theorem for the simple uh, random walk full of regrets. So essentially you, you have to understand what is a, central limit theorem for sums of uh, uniform random variables. And what you find is that, uh, so delta of Tn, so that's the position of the uh, walker full of regret, divided by, by root n, this converges to a Gaussian uh, variable centered with variance uh, one third. And uh, actually, uh, this is uh, no new result. It's, uh, it goes back to uh, Najok and uh, Heidi uh, nearly 40 years ago, even though they do not use at all this kind of, uh, of explanation, and they were more interested in the number of leaves of your uh, random recursive tree than in the number, uh, in the difference between uh, even and odd generations. But it turns out that the two quantities uh, have the same distribution. So this result is uh, essentially due to, uh, to these assets. Okay, so this is uh, the end of our uh, warm up. And now we study uh, in more details the, uh, the true uh, repentant random walk. So I do no longer assume that uh, the walker is full of regret. Uh, the walker innovates with probability P. And uh, this repentance algorithm, which we described at the, at the beginning, is actually a, a close relative to uh, another algorithm which was introduced more than uh, 65 years ago by uh, Herbert uh, Simon. And uh, Simon was uh, uh, interested in explaining the uh, heavy tail distribution that you, are, uh, that you can uh, see in a, in a number of uh, applied statistics. So he introduced a, a model for long text uh, so you, a text is simply uh, a sequence of words and the words are W1, etc., WN. So you imagine that you, you produce a, a book and you are analyzing the, the words of a book. So what is uh, Simon's algorithm? So at each time uh, with a fixed probability P, and this is the same P as ours, you decide to, uh, that the next word that you write is a new word different from all the proceedings that you have used so far. And with probability, uh, complementary probability one minus P, you simply repeat one of the words that you have already written and you choose that one uniformly at random among the, the, the text that you have already written. Okay, so I hope uh, that uh, 
Simon's algorithm uh, is clear. So let, let us uh, represent this uh, algorithm as, as a forest. And, uh, and the trees uh, will correspond to the new words which are introduced in the text. So you, you start writing uh, your first word, W1. Uh, then, okay, you flip your, 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 your coin and uh, you decide to repeat it. So I just draw an edge and I also call W1 the, the new vertex because it's a repetition. Then maybe you, uh, after for the third word, you decide to innovate. You pick a new word which you haven't used. Then maybe at the, the fourth one is the repetition of the first. Uh, the fifth one is the repetition of the fourth word and so on. You create then your, your, a new world at the six steps and uh, you repeat it at the seven steps and so on. Okay. So you see that the algorithm of Simon uh, can be written down as a, as a forest like this. And the, uh, the roots of the trees are the new words that you have used in your text. Okay. Okay, so now there is a clear connection with uh, the, the, the dynamics of the uh, repentant walker. And so wh what do we need to, uh, to transform Simon algorithm and reinterpret it in our setting? Well, as I said, each tree corresponds to a new word in Simon's algorithm. So it's a, an innovation for us. It's a new step, new independent step that the walker makes. So you mark each tree with an independent copy of the, of the step distribution mu that you have fixed. And then uh, you need to analyze the contributions of uh, this step. So you, you need to analyze the difference between the uh, number of vertices at even generation and the number of vertices at odd generation in each tree. And this is uh, the variable which we denoted by delta t. And you sum all what you have done and you see that there is this, uh, uh, well, quite, quite interesting formula for the position of the, of the walker. So recall that S hat, uh, S chech n is the position of the uh, repentant walker after n steps. So you measure the difference delta t between the number of even and odd vertices for each tree of your forest. You reweight it by the typical step, xt, and you take the sum over all the, the trees uh, in your forest. And this gives you the position. Okay? So you have to understand, you have to analyze now the asymptotic behavior of this sum. Okay, so what you need are the following three facts for this. Uh, the first one is uh, the distribution of the trees conditionally on their sizes. And this is something which goes back to Mer and Moon in uh, 74. So Mer and Moon uh, observes the following remarkable property for random recursive trees. So if you take a random recursive tree, no matter what its size is, and you remove a vertex from it, then it will split your tree into two subtrees. And given their sizes, these two subtrees are in turn independent random recursive trees. Okay, so this is a kind of a property which is called uh, sometimes uh, uh, randomness preservation or splitting property. Uh, it's, it's very specific to um, uh, random recursive trees. But again, if you remove, you, you need not even to choose it at, at random. You can remove a fixed one then the two subtrees that you obtain, conditionally on their sizes, are two independent recursive trees. And when you iterate uh, this, then you see that actually the, the trees that arise in Simon's algorithm, the, in the forest that we have just described, conditionally on their sizes, these are independent random recursive trees. So you have a, a, description, a, con a description of the trees in uh, Simon's forest, conditionally on the sizes. The next result is, is actually the, the result of uh, Herbert Simon uh, himself. Herbert Simon analyzed the proportion of trees with a given size. So you, you let your algorithm grow uh, until you have written, say, uh, n words, n being very large. 
on average, uh, you will have PN new words, PN different words, which have been used. And you count how many words have appeared exactly once, how many words have appeared exactly twice, how many words have appeared exactly 10 times, and so on. And what Simon observed is that this proportion of, uh, of trees having a given size converges as the, the size n tends to infinity. And the limit is uh, given by this formula here, where b is uh, for the beta distribution. So this is a, a probability distribution on the set of positive integers, which is called the, the Yule-Simon distribution because it's very closely related actually to, to Yule branching processes. And in fact, yes, Simon uh, called it uh, the Yule distribution, but now it's known as a Yule-Simon distribution. And the last bit of, uh, uh, that you need is also uh, a relatively recent result. Uh, now it's for the Gaussian fluctuations uh, for the proportion of trees with size one. So that is, in the preceding result, you take k equals to one. You, you are interested in the number of singletons uh, in, your, in your forest. And uh, remember that these play uh, a specific role in, the, uh, in particular for the ballistic behavior of the, of the repentant walker. And actually, uh, the, the fluctuations around the, the, the average can be deduced from a result on uh, fluctu Gaussian fluctuations for urns, which have, which have been proved by, uh, by Hu and Zeng some uh, 20 years ago. So these are the, I would say, the, the three main ingredients, plus the, the preliminaries that we discussed about uh, uh, Eulerian number and uh, the, the expression of uh, delta, uh, interpretation of delta in terms of, uh, of descent in random permutation that are needed to, uh, to establish the, the Gaussian, uh, the normality uh, of the uh, repentant walker. Uh, essentially, these are the three ingredients that you need to analyze asymptotically uh, the formula in red. Okay, so I, I think I still have some, some time uh, and I would like to make a comparison with uh, uh, something quite related, but different. It's, uh, we will compare uh, the behavior of the uh, repentant walker with uh, the one of a self-confident person. Uh, so what is a, a, a self-confident random walk, or sometimes one call it a, a step-reinforced random walk. So the dynamics are very similar, except of the fact that instead of regretting your actions, your previous actions, then you are extremely uh, pleased with them and you repeat them. So this uh, self-confident walker is uh, denoted with S hat. As before, it's uh, the sum of, uh, of steps, it's X hat one, X hat two, and so on. And the way you define these uh, uh, reinforced steps is essentially the same as for the repentant walker, except that you change the sign in case, of, uh, uh, in case when your bit is equal to zero. So if you remember uh, the description at the very beginning, uh, the, the steps of the repentant walk was defined exactly in this way, except that the plus here was given by a minus here. Okay, so that is instead of compensating uh, your step, you repeat it. So this changes, uh, this change may look innocent, but it changes uh, quite significantly the, the dynamics. In particular, it's not difficult to, to see that uh, the steps uh, have always the, the distribution mu. So it's not a stationary sequence, but nonetheless, the one-dimensional distributions are fixed. And in particular, it's uh, not a surprise if the one-dimensional di distribution is always the same, that uh, the law of large numbers uh, is not affected by uh, the reinforcement. So this means that uh, for the self-confident uh, random walker, on average, uh, after n step, it will be at m1 times n. 
where uh, M1 is the mean of the, the typical step. But for the fluctuations, it's, uh, it's a bit more complicated. Actually, there is a, a phase transition which occurs at the critical parameter P equals a half, um, as I will now explain. So here is the, the, the central limit theorem for the uh, self-confident worker. So if P is greater than a half, so meaning that you are innovating a lot with a priority greater than a half, you make new step independent of your past, uh, then there is a, essentially a, a central limit in the same way as one should expect, except uh, that the, the variance of, uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in the limit of the normal distribution has to be modified. Uh, you, you have to divide the variance of the typical step by uh, 2p minus 1. So you, you, you actually increase the variance. And for p less than a half, so this is the case where the, the worker is, uh, yes, is, is very self-confident. Uh, he innovates less and tends to repeat more what he, he has already done. So then uh, there is an, so you, you start as before uh, by your random walk reinforced random walk minus n times the, the mean. But there is an additional fact, uh, quantity that you need to subtract, an additional correction, which is given by n to the power p uh, times l, where l, I think there is a misprint, sorry, here, it should be uh, one minus p, probably, uh, where l is um, some non-degenerate uh, random variable. And then once you have done this additional correction, you have again uh, convergence to uh, a normal distribution with uh, uh, this variance. Okay. So the, the second statement is, uh, is due to uh, Marco uh, Bertengi, a uh, student of mine, and uh, it, it extends a result which has been proved by uh, Kubot and Takei for the uh, uh, elephant random. Okay, so how do we uh, compare the, the two? Well, the dynamics of the repentant random walker and the self-confident random walker look very similar. Uh, but actually, the uh, repentant random walker is much, difficult, much more difficult to analyze than the self-confident one. And this could be a, a statement for, uh, for real life. I mean, when you are dealing with someone who is self-confident, well, it's much more easy to predict what this person will be doing. At the opposite, uh, if you are dealing with someone uh, who repents a lot, who is undecided, well, uh, this, uh, this person is probably uh, harder to, to analyze and it's harder to foresee what this person will do. And just to illustrate this, uh, this sentence, let's, let's consider the, the simplest case of all when the, the distribution of the typical step is a direct mass at one. So meaning that all the steps uh, are plus ones. So if you reinforce, well, it does not, if you consider the, the self-confident worker, it makes no difference whether the, the worker decides to innovate or to reinforce, because in any case, it will make a step uh, plus one. And so the, the, the position of the worker after n steps will always be n. On the other hand, if you look now at the repentant worker, this does make a difference. And even in the simpler case of the random worker full of regret, when the worker keeps regretting things, then you see that you have really a, a truly stochastic process in the end, and we have uh, analyzed its uh, asymptotic behavior. So in short, how do you formalize uh, this uh, difference between the, the, this comparison between the, the self-confident and the repentant worker? Uh, both analysis can be done using this uh, uh, algorithm of uh, Simon uh, for, uh, and the, the representation with uh, Forrest that we described. For the uh, repentant worker, I just repeated here the, the formula uh, the key formula which we use to, to analyze the, the position of the worker. And uh, the important quantity, 
was this difference between the number of vertices at even generation and the number of vertices at odd generations. And for the uh, self-confident worker, I mean, uh, there is no change of size. So the only thing which matters is the size of the tree. And so this has been uh, fully described uh, asymptotically. I mean, the statistics of it have been uh, fully uh, described asymptotically uh, by Herbert, Herbert Simon uh, many years ago. So this, uh, this quantity is much easier to analyze than this one, in short. So that was uh, basically all what I wanted to, to, to explain. Uh, I hope you enjoyed my uh, small trip and I will then uh, close my, uh, my screen. Don't. Well, thank you very much, Jean. Indeed, it was very nice talk, very very pleasant uh, okay, to see much. and follow. Thank you so much. Uh, but you finished a little bit earlier than <laughs> than you could, <laughs> so we have got uh, some time for questions and uh, and answers. So please, uh, if you wish to ask a question, unmute yourself uh, and fire. Uh, yes, I would like to uh, ask a question, if I may. C can you hear me? Yes, sure. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, I wonder, is there any other way of choosing the U of N to get, as it were, a different tree structure and a different sort of behavior? I'm not surprised by your question in the sense that it's a very good question and I'm not surprised that you're asking a very good question um, and it's probably also a, a rather difficult one mm. uh, so th th there have been some studies uh, trying to uh, expand the scope of a Simon algorithm uh, to mm. situations where the memory uh, you do not have a full uniform memory of your text but you say, for instance, you, you, you recall uh, much, is, much more easily uh, words which you have written recently than the mm -hmm. old one. So the, there are some, uh, some results in, um, in this framework. Um, but as, as you pointed out, um, what will probably uh, fail in the analysis is that the tree that you construct are no longer random recursive trees. Mm -hmm. And therefore, this uh, fundamental splitting property of Mer and Moon, which I used mm -hmm. to say that the forest that I am observing is a forest of random recursive trees, uh, will fail. And I guess that the, uh, well, yes, essentially the, the analysis I presented will, uh, will collapse. Mm -hmm. So th there is some hope to, to rescue the the, of course, it depends very much on of what type of memory you, you, you want to put in. Uh, but in, in some circumstances, you can, uh, you can uh, recuperate the uh, analog of uh, Simon's uh, uh, asymptotic results, so the, the Yule-Simon distribution, it has to be changed. But what will uh, no longer be known are the, the distributions of the trees, and you will not, not uh, be able also to uh, investigates uh, the distribution of the difference between odd and uh, mm -hmm. even vertices. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I guess that this is a, a difficult problem, uh, not even in full generality, but even when you take a very specific uh, type of memory, say that you, mm -hmm. you take exponentially, mm -hmm. or I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess it's, uh, it would be tougher. Mm -hmm. Can Any further questions? Yep. A question. So, it, but if the memory is bounded, mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. then you go back to the Markovian behavior? Uh, so yes, you, you will have yeah. a, so a, say you look a, at the a kind of a buffer. Yeah, yeah. If, if you remember just five steps, uh, yes, I, I guess you, you then things might be uh, easier to handle. I, I remember mm -hmm. talks by uh, Francis Comet in which he uh, he studied uh, random walks and the, the convex hull of uh, random walks uh, um, with such um, uh, such type of dynamics. So yes, if if the, the memory is is really short, then 
you shouldn't be too far away uh, from the uh, usual setting. And if you go to the other walk, what you call it, the confident walk, and yeah. you mentioned that there is phase transition there at P equals one half. So I guess yeah. that depends on the fact that the memory is not bounded, uh, because if the memory uh, is bounded, would you, you might? Yes, it's mm -hmm. yes, yes, certainly. But I, I believe that if the if you allow, for instance, uh, power tail memory, uh, you are remembering yes. more easily. Uh, the, the recent past, but still you keep track of the very ancient past. Uh, there will still be a, a phase transition. Uh, it's a bit complicated. I, I think it would be too yeah. too difficult okay. to uh, to explain it now. Uh, but yes, probably probably for the, the self confident walker, um, the the problem is tractable, and I, and I expect that the uh, phase transition will no longer take place at a half, but at a different parameter. But for the, uh, the repentant one, uh, things will be much more complicated because you see, you really need to understand the, the structure of the tree. It's not sufficient to know what is the size. You need to, to analyze the difference between even and odd vertices. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, when you are self-confident, all what matters is the size of the tree. And this mm -hmm. is a much easier uh, quantity to, to deal with. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, please? Yeah, um, I have a question. Uh, so, if you think about the like the, the the values of the XIs coming up as like colors, like each one's an individual color, then this is sort of like a, an earn model, right? Yeah, yeah. Or you could view it as an earn model. Yeah. So then, can you say something about the like you know proportions of sizes of colors, or view it as a random measure or something like that? Uh, okay. So, so basically, this is the uh, the result of um, uh, Herbert Simon. Uh, which I uh, maybe I can share again my screen and, and show you the, the result. Uh, so this is uh, this result here. So in, in, in the setting that you suggest, you have infinitely many colors. In, indeed, as you said, you, you can interpret this as an urn, and uh, you you count. You you are in, in the urn the you, you are introducing, uh, you have the possibility of introducing new colors, which you have never, never seen before. And uh, the result of Simon is uh, uh, a limit theorem for the number of balls, uh, uh, which, uh, uh, of the number, sorry, the number of colors, which uh, uh, have a unique representant in the urn, or which occur exactly twice in the urn, and so on and so on. So this is a kind of a, a law of large number because a, you are analyzing a, a random quantity, you normalize it, and the limit is deterministic. And in terms of, uh, of urns, actually, uh, this is uh, something also which I, I used, is this uh, the fluctuation of, for the, the number of balls, uh, of, no, sorry, the number of colors which have a single representant in the urn. So this is where one uses uh, Gaussian fluctuations uh, for uh, urns, uh, bicolor urns, which was proved uh, in this uh, in this paper. Uh, and for many colors, um, th there is also, of course, this uh, well-known paper by uh, Swante Janssen, in which he analyzes the uh, uh, central limit or absence of central limits for uh, uh, for urns, which probably you 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 know. Mm -hmm. but, there, but, there, but there's also like for your model on top of the sizes of the trees there's also each time you introduce the color you kind of get the negative of the color as well exactly exactly uh, okay exactly. and that's just a matter of looking at how many absolutely. you have at different levels within the trees and, and so you can describe that that's, absolutely so that's yeah. that's really a, a crucial point it's not sufficient to know the content of the urn you really have to know the structure of, uh, of the you, you have to keep track of the uh, of the tree structure uh, of uh, what 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 uh, what balls did you uh, pick, and uh, how is the new ball that you uh, put in your urn related to the one you you you, you picked? So here the, the the dynamic is is kind of simple. If you pick uh, uh, a color blue, uh, then you know that you will return a color minus blue in a sense. Mm -hmm. 
Mm, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So you can imagine more uh, more complex uh, dynamics as well. So then, and then just a separate question. So then, for the law of large numbers, is it really that the the whole this p on two minus p that is the proportion of just ones that have never been chosen before? That's right. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, because uh, the reason is uh, maybe I just alluded it to too quickly, but you see, uh, if you have now uh, balls, I mean uh, variables which have been picked exactly, uh, well, you have two representatives, then you know that there will be one plus one minus. So this one will cancel out. You will never uh, see them. And for three and more, um, the, the distribution of the, the difference delta t is always symmetric. Mm -hmm. This makes that uh, it, it's unimportant whether you have a, a, a random variable, a, a, a state distribution which has a positive mean, because for the as soon as you have uh, used it uh, three times or more, uh, on average, it will be zero. Yeah. So only right. the, the variables which you have used once and not more uh, will be uh, playing a role in the uh, ballistic behavior. Yeah, you get, you get this kind of like Friedman's urn, right? Where uh, you're always flipping to you the other side and you get, you're always getting this one, it's converging to a half, basically. Yeah. Oh. yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. That was a great talk, by the way. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. So, any any further questions? If not, I will abuse my position. Ask a couple of questions. Uh, Jean, uh, first question about um, the repentant work. I uh, for the law of large numbers, uh, no almost sure convergence, or uh, or maybe. No, I, I I would be rather optimistic. I mean, the the proof uh, which I gave is. Uh, well, first of all, it's, it, it's, it's rather simple and it's, uh, it uses, uh, I guess, I forgot a bit, but it's maybe, maybe characteristic functions. I mean, you can, you, can, uh, you can compute characteristic functions and play with it. And so it gives a convergence in, uh, in probability. Uh, but most likely there are martingales which are uh, kind of hidden in uh, such processes. And there is a good hope that uh, uh, the ballistic behavior will will hold uh, almost surely. Mm. So if if I should bet, I, I would say uh, likely. I haven't uh, given a, a serious thought. Yep. Uh, now for the central limit theorem, still for a repentant one. Uh, uh, is there any interesting effects in the multivariate case if X is real multivariate? Say, covariance structure would be interestingly affected. So I. I, I believe that this question can be resolved by um, um, this uh, kramer volt uh, device in the sense that uh, you will fix uh, a direction and project. I mean, you take the scalar product of the, the walker with a, a given vector. And what you observe is, again, actually a, a repentant uh, random walk in dimension one. So uh, I'm pretty confident that for higher dimension, uh, uh, you have a, a, a similar result. And so you, you will get, uh, uh, as a limit, uh, a Gaussian uh, variable in, uh, in, uh, in RD, say. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the covariance matrix is simply, I, I, I will have to check that, but I, I would guess that it's uh, the original well, oh no, your, your, your question is, 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 is more clever than, <laughs> than <laughs> I first. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's, it's good. Okay. Uh, may, maybe if, the, if things are, are centered right from the beginning, uh, I, probably then uh, you just get the original covariance multiplied by a factor. And mm -hmm. so if there is a drift, um, well, possibly one has to be more careful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, uh, sorry, yes, I, I, I answered to, to Hashley. Thank you. And I, I was looking at uh, the slide with the central limit theorem for the, uh, mm -hmm. the self-confident thing. Yeah. I just spotted there is, there is a, a, another misprint. So for the first uh, relation, you, you had check rather than head. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, so for the case P one half, nothing is known. No, 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 it's a, it's a critical case, so it's known. Um, so you, 
then, then you you need to renormalize instead of yep. uh, root n by your root n logarithm of n. Okay. And then you have uh, a normal distribution. A normal, which is, uh, a normal distribution. There is a, an additional factor in the okay. renormalization. Yeah. Thank you. So okay. looks looks okay. like there are no further questions. So Jean, thank you very much again for agreeing to give a talk. A question, Kostya. Oh, yes. Oh, Hi, Ross. Hello, John. Hi. Um, I, well, it's a simple and obvious one, and I guess um, uh, I guess the point is you could do a lot more random walk things, such as recurrence and transients, and uh, uh, you know, drift to infinity, and all those things that we like to do. Okay, so that's also uh, an excellent question, uh, and I think it's uh, also uh, a rather difficult one. So I, I've been working, uh, I mean, uh, it's, it's, it's amusing because I'm currently working on the recurrence problem for the uh, elephant random walk. So that's, uh, there are some, uh, some interesting stuff going on. Uh, in higher, in, it, it's quite clear that in dimension three and more, uh, the processes that you construct by, uh, by this, uh, this alg algorithm will be uh, transient, just like the, uh, the usual random walk. The, the difficulty will be uh, in dimension two. And I think it's, it's uh, even for the, the simplest one, I mean, you, you just uh, have, a, uh, you, you just walk on the one of the possible uh, four neighbors. Uh, I think it's, uh, uh, it's, it, it's, uh, it's a complex question and I, uh, I can have some guess, but I'm very, very far from, uh, from uh, an answer. And uh, your, your question actually has been much studied in the setting of uh, uh, rain, so-called reinforced uh, random walks, but this has uh, often uh, a, a different meaning. Uh, so the, you, you are working on a, walking on a graph, you take some infinite graph, say for instance, uh, ZD, uh, and each time you cross an edge, then uh, you increase the probability of uh, crossing that edge uh, the next time you, you visit one of the, of the two uh, vertices that define that edge. And questions about, uh, which look pretty innocent, about uh, recurrence and transience of, uh, of a reinforced random walk uh, are uh, amazingly complicated. And so there have been, uh, okay, so this was raised by uh, Diakonis uh, maybe uh, 40 years ago, and there have been uh, a lot of progress and only the, 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 the most natural question have been solved quite, uh, quite recently after uh, yeah, very significant efforts. Notably by uh, by uh, Christophe Sabo, and uh, it's a uh, it's it, it's it's a very interesting uh, topic and a very difficult one. The questions are look so innocent, uh, but the answers are so hard to to get. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now I suppose <laughs> I suppose we can thank Jean again. So thank you very much for your really interesting talk. Thank and you, please come again. Come to come to our <laughs> seminars. Not 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 only as a speaker, but also as part of audience. So thanks everybody who was with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thanks so much. <laughs>